time for football. Time for a hands. The beer refreshing as the land of sky blue waters. Ham's beer. The greatest pro football plays of the week. Hi, Jack Brickhouse speaking for the Ham Brewing Company of St. Paul, Minnesota and San Francisco, California. Tonight we'll be reviewing the greatest plays of the week in pro football. All the action shots you will see are hand-picked from films taken on the spot. Plays you football fans will talk about. And Ham's beer, refreshing as the land of sky blue waters, is mighty glad to bring them to you. So pour yourself a ham and let's get set to enjoy pro football. Here to bring us the action, Jim Leeming. It's kickoff time in Green Bay, Wisconsin, as the 1954 National Football League opener features the hometown Packers against the invading Steelers from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Early in the opening stanza, the Packers' Howie Ferguson, from his own 22, swings around and for seven yards to the 29-yard line. Floyd Breezy Reed on a quick opener, then dashes through tackle, keep right on moving, and breezes through the entire Steeler team for a brilliant 69-yard touchdown journey that gives the Packers an early 7-0 lead. After the kickoff, the Steelers storm back. Quarterback Jim Finks warms up his pitching arm by firing complete to Ray Matthews and a first down on the Packer 34-yard line. Keeping his offense in the air, Finks fires another strike. This time to Captain L.B. Nickel for seven yards to the 27. The veteran quarterback's right arm is paying off with big dividends. From the 21, he hits Ray Matthews for six more yards to the Steeler 15. Moments later, Finks strikes it rich as he fires a touchdown pass to Notre Dame's Johnny Latner, and it's the Steelers seven, Packers seven at the end of the first quarter. On the third play of the new quarter, the Packers are on the move. Floyd Reed tracks the Steeler line for six yards to Pittsburgh's 48-yard line. From there, Tobin Roth does it all in one pitch as he heaves a long aerial to Bill Houghton, who makes a sensational grab on the two, and it's touchdown Packers. The score now reads Packers 14, Steelers 7. Later, the Packers start another drive, but it falls short, so Fred Cohn toes home a 45-yard field goal to increase Green Bay's advantage to 17-7. Immediately following the kickoff, the Steelers begin to roll. Jim Finks and end George Salima team up for 16 yards to the midfield strike. Finks keeps right on throwing. This time, Johnny Latner's on the receiving end, and the ex-Notre Dame All-American dances down the sideline for 18 yards to the Packer 32. Two plays carry five more yards, then Finks rifles to L.B. Nickel for 18 yards and a first down on the Packer's seven-yard strike. Three plays carry to the two, then on fourth down, Finks completes the march by tossing a touchdown to L.B. Nickel, and the Steelers trail by only three points at the end of the first half. Near the end of the third quarter, the Packers are on the move. Quarterback Tobin Roth gets off a nifty toss to Howie Ferguson that's good for 24 yards and a first down on his own 48-yard line. The drive carries to the 23, but there the Steelers hold. So Fred Cohn boots home his second field goal of the day, and the Packers increase their margin 20 to 14. With less than five minutes remaining in the final quarter, the Steelers are fighting for a score. Jim Finks tosses to L.B. Nickel for nine yards to the Packer 48-yard line. With time running short, the amazing Mr. Finks rifles a long 37-yard aerial into the arms of Ray Matthews, and it's touchdown Steelers score. Packers 20, Steelers 20. Paul Held closes out the thrilling finish 
by splitting the uprights as the fast finishing Pittsburgh Steelers inaugurate the season by nosing out the Green Bay Packers 21 to 20. This is the land of sky blue waters. Land of towering pines. Cool blue lakes. Sparkling moonlight. A land of real refreshment. Listen. From the land of sky blue waters, waters. From the land of pines, lofty balsams, Comes a beer refreshing, Hams a beer refreshing. Hams. Wonderful hams. Now brewed on the coast to bring you refreshing eastern flavor. Refreshingly priced. Hams. Mmm. Hams. Now it's brewed for you, neat western sky. Famous eastern taste, tantalizing. Hams, a beer refreshing. The world champion Detroit Lions begin the defense of their National Football League crown at Briggs Stadium before a hometown crowd that numbers in excess of 57,000 fans. Affording the opposition for the Motor City 11 will be the Chicago Bears. It's the Bears with the ball in the opening period. Rookie Chicago quarterback Zeke Bretkowski rifles a bullet pass to John Hoffman. The play covers 53 yards and it's goal to go for the Bears on the Detroit three yard line. When the big lion line braces, the Bears go for a field goal. George Blanda's placement is good. Chicago leads three nothing. Later in the quarter, the Bears are on the prowl again. Bretkowski hoists a hefty heave to Harlan Hill. For rookies, these boys are performing like old pros. The play goes 64 yards for a touchdown, giving the Bears a surprising 10 to nothing advantage. The champion Lions aren't used to such treatment. On the following kickoff, they show that they too mean business. Bill Bowman takes the ball on the goal line, escorted by a pack of Lions. Bowman tears through the Bears on a 100-yard counting canter. Detroit trails now by 10 to 7. Anxious to spring an opening game upset, the Bears take to the air. Rutkowski heaves and then grieves as Bill Stitz intercepts for Detroit and carries to the Chicago 46. Stopped short of a first down, the Detroiters drop Jungle Jim Martin back for a 44-yard field goal attempt. Martin's kick is good. It's a tie game at 10 all. In the second quarter, George Blanda takes over the Chicago signal calling chores. Blanda opens up with a pass to Harlan Hill that gains 39 yards and puts the ball deep in the Lions' den. Harry Jagadi plows across for the score as Chicago again grabs the upper hand by a 17 to 10 count. The Lions launch another come from behind drive that finds Doak Walker porting the pigskin 18 yards to the Chicago 49. Tom Dublinski fires a pass into the left flat that's taken by Jug Gerard and it's goal to go for Detroit. Detroit razzle dazzle clicks for six on a Dublinski to Horschmeyer to Dibble pass play. At the end of the first half, it's a tie game. Detroit Lions 17, Chicago Bears 17. The victory hungry Bears begin the second half impressively. George Blanda's short pass to Jim Dooley is turned into a long gain as Dooley dashes 42 yards to the Lions 14. Again, the Detroit forward wall holds, but no one can stop Blanda as his field goal gives the Bears the lead once more, 20 to 17. The Lions have been coming back every time, and they begin to do that again as Doak Walker shags Tom Dublinski's pass for a 53-yard advance deep into the lair of the Bears. Punchy Horsmeyer is a halfback turned passer today as he fires his second touchdown bomb of the game. This one to Bill Bowman puts the Lions on top, 24 to 20. Another Chicago field goal narrows the Lion lead to one point, but the Detroiters are out to increase their advantage in the final period as Horsmeyer skips 35 yards to the Bears' 38. 
The lions roar for more, and that's what they get as Tom Dublinsky and Lou Carpenter team up on a 13-yard TD toss that makes it Detroit 31, Chicago 23. Later in the quarter, the Bears are forced to punt. Bratkowski boots. Doak Walker picks up the pigskin on his own 30. The Dapper Doker is off to the races on one of his famous scoring scampers. Score now, Lions 41, Bears 23. Late in the game, a desperation pass by Chicago's Zeke Preskowski is picked off by the Lions' Sherwin Gandy and returned deep in the Bear country. Doak Walker caps a great afternoon as he outsprints the Bears to pay dirt as the Lions begin their quest for a third consecutive world championship by downing the Bears 48-23. In another pro thriller, the highly regarded Los Angeles Rams meet the Baltimore Colts in Baltimore's Memorial Stadium. More than 38,000 fans are hardly in their seats when the Rams pull the old sleeper play on the game's first offensive maneuver. Norm Van Brocklin passes to halfback Skeets Quinlan, and Quinlan waltzes down the field and into the end zone on a thrilling 80-yard touchdown play. The Rams add two field goals, and at the end of the first quarter, it's Los Angeles 13, Baltimore nothing. Baltimore starts to roll in the second period. Quarterback Gary Kerkorian passes to Royce Womble for 14 yards to put the leather on the Rams' 27-yard line. The drive comes to a halt when fullback Zolly Toast pass is intercepted by Ram halfback Bill Sherman. Sherman threads his way back to his own 35 before being upended. The Rams move to their 46, then the versatile Skeets Quinlan fires a long aerial that's grabbed by wingman Bob Boyd. The play nets 34 yards to the Baltimore 20. The Rams just won't be stopped as 226-pound Deacon Dan Taller pulls into pay dirt from three yards out for another Ram touchdown. It's now 20 to nothing. Baltimore fails to move, so it's Los Angeles once more on the attack. Quarterback Billy Wade passes to Skeets Quinlan, and the fancy stepping scat back spins his way for 47 yards before being tripped up on the Baltimore 18 by Bob Lieberman. The Rams register once more as quarterback Billy Wade fakes a pass and runs wide for a touchdown from five yards out, and at the end of the first half, it's Rams 27, Colts nothing. In the third period, Norman Van Brocklin takes the controls for the Rams. He pitches a long pass that's complete to Big Bob Boyd, and it's a 27-yard pickup on the Baltimore 40. On the next play, Van Brocklin continues his brilliant passing. He arches a long aerial that's gobbled up by Crazy Legs Hurts for another Ram touchdown, and after three periods, Los Angeles 34, Baltimore nothing. It's Billy Wade's turn to shine for the Rams in the final period. He fakes a pass and then routes for 33 yards around the Colts' left flank before being stopped on the Baltimore 17. The Rams capitalize once more as fullback Tank Younger barrels over the goal with a TD from three yards out to give Los Angeles a 41-0 bulge late in the game. 41 points down, the Colts just refuse to quit. Fullback Johnny Husbar slashes up the middle for 15 yards to the Los Angeles 25. Colt quarterback Fred Ank calls for a pass, but rookie Paul Miller intercepts for Los Angeles, and the Rams stymie the Colt drive. In the waning moments of the game, Fleet Skeets Quinlan puts the Rams on the scoreboard once again as he dances 31 yards for the final Los Angeles touchdown. The Rams thus open the season with a rousing 48 to nothing victory over Baltimore. Coach Joe Steidahar, star-studded Chicago Cardinals, play host to the improved New York Giants. The Comiskey Park pro battle is off to a rip-roaring start as the Giants passing wizard, Charlie Connerly, 
steps back on the second play of the ball game and hits in Bob Schnelker for 55 yards and a New York touchdown. In less than a minute, it's the Giants seven, the Cardinals nothing. New York adds a field goal to the scoring column before the Cards' Lamar McCann can get his club moving with a completed pass to Don Crittenden. On fourth down, Crittenden place kicks the pigskin neatly between the uprights, and Chicago's back in the ball game, 10 to 3, as the quarter ends. Near the end of the second period, New York's Frank Gifford makes a desperation catch of Bobby Clatterbuck's pass, and the Giants are in scoring position again. Rookie Clatterbuck makes good with another bullseye to Ken McAfee, and it's New York 17, Chicago 3. With minutes to go before halftime, Steve Romanek adds to the Cardinals' woe by fumbling the ball away to the rampaging Giants. New York wastes no time moving again as Clatterbuck starts where he left off and hits halfback Buford Long on a play that carries the Giants to the Chicago 4. It seems as though it's Clatterbuck against the Cardinals as he sneaks for another giant touchdown and it's New York 24, Chicago 3 at halftime. Early in the second half, the Giants are rolling again with Eddie Price breaking through the middle for 11 yards. Chuck Connerly takes to the air and hits Frank Gifford who scampers 24 yards for another New York first down. It's Connolly again, this time to Ken McAfee as the Giants roll to the Chicago 29. There's no stopping Chuck and Charlie now. His deadly arm pinpoints Gifford again on the Chicago Cardinal 20. This one makes it four straight for Connolly, and it sails into the arms of Don Schnelker and Impader. And now it's New York 31, Chicago 3. The excitement's just started. The giant kickoff is taken on the six by rookie Les Gobel, and the 160-pound halfback from Alfred University breaks up the middle and into the clear with a burst of speed that leaves 11 bewildered New Yorkers behind him. New York adds another field goal, and at the end of three, it's the Giants 34, Chicago 10. Late in the final period, the powerful Giant Express rolls again with a clatterbuck to McAfee pass play that moves the New Yorkers to the Cardinal 46. The Giants show Chicago they can run, too. Herb Johnson finds a hole on the right side of the line and weaves his way to the five-yard line. Buford Long takes a clatterbuck handoff and goes wide to the left. Barely making the corner of the end zone for another Giant touchdown and the finishing touch to a disastrous Cardinal afternoon. Giant passing and Giant power proved too much for Chicago to handle as New York humbles the Cardinals 41 to 10. Jack Brickhouse again. If someone should ask me right now to describe the flavor of Ham's beer, here's what I'd tell them. Ham's is crisp in flavor, clean cut to the taste, and extra refreshing. But that isn't the whole story. Ham's beer is brewed to capture a flavor as refreshing as the land of sky blue waters. Every glass reminds you of piney breezes coming off a gleaming cool lake. This refreshing eastern flavor from the land of sky blue waters is yours now at a refreshing local price. That's another reason Ham's has caught on with millions of Westerners. Mighty fast, too. Next time, try Ham's beer. Enjoy its refreshing Eastern flavor, now at a refreshing local price. At San Francisco, the hometown 49ers, loaded with talent and gunning for a championship, took on the Washington Redskins in their opening game of the season. The Redskins soon discovered that they have traveled a long way for very little as they're forced to punt from their own 21 after receiving the opening kickoff. The prospectors display their punch on their very first play from scrimmage as jet propelled Joe Perry blasts over the middle, cuts to the sideline, and streaks for 51 yards to the Washington 7. On third down, Perry finishes the job as he smacks over left guard to deliver a 49er touchdown after less than three minutes of the first quarter. 
San Francisco six, Washington nothing. The 49ers gain possession on a fumble and immediately prospect for pay dirt. Hurricane U. McElhenney takes Tittle's pass and roars to the Redskin five. Y.A. Tittle totes the ball out to his right, then flips to Billy Wilson in the end zone as the 49ers rack up another quick tally. After the conversion at San Francisco 13, Washington nothing, and that's the way the first quarter ends. Late in the second period, Y.A. Tittle stirs up another scoring sally with a screen pass to Hugh McElhenney, who runs over, around, and through the Redskins for a beautiful 31-yard pickup to the Washington 14. The 49er line opens a hole, and Hurricane U hustles through to make it first down and goal to go from the Redskin 3. Tittle tallies from the one on a quarterback sneak, and now the 49ers lead the Redskins by a comfortable 20 to nothing. Jack Scarbath tries to move the skins through the air, but tosses into trouble as 49er Rex Curry intercepts and gallops down the sideline to break into the Washington Wigwam for another San Francisco score, making it 49ers 27, Redskins nothing. The Redskins get up a little steam with 2-2 Charlie Justice supplying the speed and power. Watch him go. The hardest earned 25 yards of the day and too late to do any good as the half runs out with the Redskins still scoreless. In the third quarter, Washington takes advantage of a short punt to get going. Harry Gilmer passes over the middle to ex-Michigan stater Billy Wells, and the skins are on the 49ers 15. Jack Scarbath tries his arm and scores a perfect bullseye to Joe Scudura that tallies a touchdown for the Redskins. Score now, San Francisco 27, Washington 7. Joe the Jet Perry, the pile-driving prospector, shows how he won the league ground-gaining title with a bruising 24-yard cruise to the Washington 31 that puts San Francisco once more on the move. A tittle toss keeps them going as Bill Jessup makes a tremendous diving catch on the Redskin 14-yard line. Jolton Joe Arenas takes the hog hide for a ride with an 11-yard trip on the last play of the third quarter. The 49ers open the fourth period in familiar fashion as Joe Perry crosses to make it San Francisco 34, Washington 7 in this West Coast touchdown parade. Late in the game, Arnie Galiffa, the ex-Army great, gets a chance to shine as he teams with Phil Jessup on a 25-yard 49er advance. John Johnson, rookie 49er halfback, closes out the scoring as he bolts over to make the final tally read, 49ers 41, Washington 7, an impressive beginning for the West Coast team. To help usher in the National Football League's 35th season, the Cleveland Browns, led by their great passing master, Otto Graham, number 14, invade the Quaker City to meet the Philadelphia Eagles at Municipal Stadium. Graham, one of the best passers in the professional ranks, quarterbacked the Browns into the divisional title last year, but today he's up against a much improved Philadelphia squad. The real fireworks don't start until the beginning of the second period when the Eagles start to penetrate the Browns' forward wall in a series of rushes. Jim Farmer makes it to the Cleveland 24. On the next play, Jerry Williams knifes his way through the center for nine yards, and the Eagles are on the 15. In the shadow of the goalposts, quarterback Bobby Thomason attempts to pass for the score. He's rushed on the play and is forced to fade some 15 yards before letting the pigskin fly into the arms of Bobby Walston. The Eagles draw first blood to lead 7-0. About two minutes before halftime, the Eagles, after recovering a Cleveland fumble, fly deeper into Brown territory on a nice pass from Thomason to the driving end, Pete Pijo. From the 30, the team of Thomas and DePijos comes on for an encore and moves the ball to the Cleveland 18. Living up to preseason predictions, Philadelphia posts another touchdown as Jerry Williams takes Thompson's toss into the end zone for the score. 
The half ends with Philadelphia leading Cleveland by 14 to nothing. In the third quarter, Cleveland begins to look like the Browns of old. Otto Graham starts to find the mark. Fred Morrison's the receiver and goes to the Eagle 37 before being knocked out of bounds. Otto the arm and Mr. Morrison seem to make the perfect pair as they team up again to move deeper into the Eagles' nest. Cleveland's flying towards touchdown's door on the expert passing of Otto Graham and this time the fine receiving of Dub Jones. As Graham goes, so go the Browns. The former Northwestern All-American finds the mark in dancing Dante Lavelli. Cleveland hits the scoreboard to trail now by only one touchdown. On the first play after the kickoff, Philadelphia's Adrian Burke is hit hard and fumbles. 250-pound Len Ford barrels through to make the recovery, and Cleveland takes possession on the Eagle 8. The granite-like defensive wall of the Eagles holds the Browns in check, but Lou the Toad Rosa makes good on a field goal attempt. The score now stands at 14 to 10, Eagles. Starting out from their own 14, the Eagles quickly move toward midfield on the fine running of fleet-footed halfback Jerry Williams. The Eagles air armada strikes deeper into Cleveland country and it's another first down on the 16 as a result of a Burke to Williams pass. Given good protection by a strong line, Burke has plenty of time to spot Skippy Jen Kennelly in the end zone. Skippy makes a leaping catch and Philadelphia at the end of three quarters of play leads Cleveland 21 to 10. At the onset of the third period, the Eagles start another drive with the combination of Burke to Williams working to perfection. A first down on the Cleveland 40. The Eagles don't let up for a moment as Toy Ledbetter comes right through the middle to pick up 11 yards and another first down. Now watch as Pete Pijos, one of the finest and fightinest ends in professional football, takes an Adrian Burke toss on the 15 for still another Eagle first down. Once more, Burke fades to pass. Pete Pijos is again the receiver, and the rugged end wraps up the scoring for the afternoon. Philadelphia, after beating Cleveland 28 to 10, appears to be the team to reckon with in the Eastern Division of the National Football League. From the land of sky blue waters comes refreshment, Ham's Beer, now brewed on the coast with a flavor so refreshing that Every minute, day and night, every minute, more and more people up and down the coast make the switch to hams. From the land of sky blue water, water. from the land of pine lofty balsams, comes a beer refreshing, hams a beer refreshing. Hams. Mmm. Hams. Listen. Say, I see you switch to hams beer, too. I'd like a carton of Ham's beer, please. Yes, ma'am. Refreshing Eastern flavor, refreshingly priced. No wonder so many folks are switching to Ham's beer. Crisp, clean cut to the taste. Refreshing as the land of sky blue waters. The Dumont sportscasters have selected the greatest play of the week in pro football. This play occurred at Briggs Stadium in Detroit. The Chicago Bears kick off to the Detroit Lions. Rookie Lion back Bill Bowman grabs the ball on his own goal line. Bowman sets sail for pay dirt 100 yards away. The big Lion linemen clear a path for Bowman and he streaks through a maze of amazed bears. Running with the speed of a frightened fox in a forest fire, Bowman goes 100 yards to score in professional football's greatest play of the week. Next week, we'll bring you from Los Angeles, the Rams against the 49ers. From Chicago, the Eagles against the Cardinals. From Green Bay, the Bears meeting the Packers. From Baltimore, the Giants battling the Colts. And from Pittsburgh, the Redskins against the Steelers. Until then, this is Jim Leeming saying so long.